So you got hired to shoot your first wedding. Congratulations. Let's chat about how you can best prepare for that big day. And the first thing I want to say is, don't freak out. It's really not as scary as you think. You've got this. Presumably you already have experience photographing and weddings are somewhat predictable. So it's actually quite easy to prepare a lot beforehand. So let's get you prepared. Keep your gear simple. Bring a camera that you already feel comfortable with and then try to get the best lens available to you. Some people really like shooting with prime lenses, other people prefer the flexibility of a zoom lens, but focus on the lens rather than the camera body because that will actually significantly impact the look of your photos. Bring a backup, both a friend and an additional camera. Do you know someone that has experience shooting weddings? Maybe you have a photo friend that you want to bring? For wedding days, having an additional set of eyes and hands is so beneficial. There's so much happening throughout a wedding day, and if you feel overwhelmed at any point, having a second person there to catch a moment that you might miss is actually so nice and makes you feel so much calmer and more relaxed and more free to be creative. It's also a really good idea to bring a second set of equipment, even if you never take it out of the bag. You never know who's going to spill a drink on your camera, and if you have a second setup, then you can feel calmer and more prepared. But also, don't worry, that doesn't usually happen. Shoot in RAW and record to two SD cards. That will give you so much more flexibility when editing later. Throughout the day, you'll be in a ton of different lighting situations, and sometimes you might just miss the perfect exposure. And if you shoot in JPEG, then it might be difficult to recover those images later. But if you shoot in RAW, you have so much flexibility. If you get that perfect facial expression or just the perfect composition and you didn't expose it correctly, if you shoot in RAW, you can later fix it. Also make sure that you record to two SD cards. It doesn't happen very often, but sometimes SD cards do corrupt and immediately saving everything to two cards can help mitigate risk and once again, make you feel calmer. Charge your batteries. It's such a simple thing and so easy to forget, but also make sure that you bring a charger to the wedding just in case. And also don't forget to bring some backup batteries for your flash, something that I like to do, which I think is a really good habit is to put your batteries in, put your SD cards in, and take a few shots before you even leave the house. That way, when you get to the venue, you can walk in and know that everything's fine, you're good to go, you're ready to shoot. Okay, let me actually show you really quick what all I have in my bag for wedding day. First of all, most important thing, water. So today I have two camera bodies. I have the Sony A93, which I'm going to be shooting with mostly today. And on this, I have a Sigma 50 1.2. That's going to be my main lens today. And then I also have a backup camera body, which is the A7R5. And on that, I have a 24 to 70. And then I usually also like to have a 70 to 200 in here as well, which we'll see if we're going to use that today, but I always like to have it in my bag. And then I have some backup batteries in here as well and a charger too. I also have a phone charger in here because I have all of the timelines and everything, all the contacts information on my phone so it's important to keep that charge as well and because I like to have a little fun with film as well I've got a film camera and a backup film roll and then I also have a small rig card case where I keep all of my memory cards and I also have backups of those as well just in case and then just in case my feet hurt too much or something like that I've got some leave as well as well as some snacks very important and of course I'm bringing my flash as well this one is the Godox B1 and I have some backup batteries for that as well and then I'm also bringing a reflector today, which might be nice for some portraits later on. And this is also a situation where it's really nice to have an extra set of hands. You can have your friend hold this reflector for your portraits. And then I also like to have this little bag that I can just keep right on me. I put my phone in here, I put SD cards in here, anything that I need immediate access to, I'll put in here. And then this backpack is the Wander Provoke 31 liters. It's really nice for weddings because you can fit a bunch of other stuff in there as well, just in case you have a very long wedding day. And once you get there, have a good attitude. This is the number one important thing. Do not stress, don't run, keep smiling, chat up guests and just make your couple and their family feel comfortable. You're going to spend all day together. And as the photographer, you're oftentimes the person that the couple spends the most time with. So you gotta make sure that you're pleasant to be around. But also don't be afraid to demand attention and take up space if you need to. For group shots, for example, make sure that you speak loudly and clearly so that everybody can hear you. You're probably directing a lot of people and they will be very grateful for your guidance to make everything go smoothly and efficiently. Overshoot. If you're considering taking the shot, just go ahead and take it. Take two or three if there are people in the shot because people actually blink a lot. Don't forget to get creative and use different angles. 
If you see a scene that you like, maybe take a wide shot and a tight shot. That will help so much later when you're creating the full gallery. It will help with storytelling and also just not getting too bent out of shape about really small photos or really wide photos. It will be really helpful later on when you have a very large pool of images to choose from for your final gallery. Get really comfortable with your flash. This is something that you can practice a lot beforehand and just really get creative with it at the wedding. Usually people are on the dance floor for a really long time and you usually have a ton of time to actually walk around, test out your flash, get as many guests as possible and get really creative with it. But also on the other hand, don't be afraid of cranking up your camera's ISO. Modern cameras are actually capable of capturing beautiful images even at higher ISOs and sometimes it's just more important to catch the feeling rather than creating a technically flawless image. And don't forget you are shooting people's memories and not a magazine cover. Okay, and this is the most crucial wedding photography tip I have for you today. And I would say that most, if not all wedding photographers would agree with this tip. You have to bring snacks. Wedding days are so long and exhausting and you're making a million little decisions all day. So you have to make sure that you replenish your brain so that you can actually continue making those decisions. And all the best gear in the world is not gonna help you if you're gonna pass out from exhaustion. We don't have snacks at B&H, but for everything else you might need for your first wedding, come to the Superstore or chat with our experts online. We can help you find the perfect camera body, help you choose a lens, or also get you all of those little accessories that you might need. Our experts can help you with all of your technical questions, but we can also give you some moral support as well. We've got people calling every day who are shooting their first wedding, and we can help you grow into the photographer you were always meant to be. You've got this. And now I want to know what was in your bag for your very first wedding? Let me know in the comments below.